Hello and uh, welcome to Journeys in Transformation Analytics. I'm Amrish Tripathi. I run the analytics business uh, at Genpact. And it is my privilege today that I have with me Snehal Desai. Uh, he is the Vice President of Augmented Intelligence at Cardinal Health. And what makes it really special uh, is uh, Cardinal Health is obviously one of the largest uh, healthcare companies out there in the world. And they are right in the middle of the vaccine distribution, right, with all the pandemic that's going on. So Snehal, welcome, and it's a privilege to have you. Thank you, Amrish. Uh, glad to be here. Wonderful. Uh, the topic, and Snehal, you and I have been kind of chatting over over last uh, like year or so, uh, and we've always been fascinated. And it's been a fascinating conversation to just hear you, uh, you driving kind of an enterprise data transformation in such a large organization, like 150 billion dollars uh, size, the complexity, uh, and and I know it's 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 a work in progress. I could totally get that. Uh, what what I'll be interesting is kind of in this kind of series of discussions, it will be uh, great to get some perspective from the key learnings that you are getting right uh, along the journey. And one of the things that you and I have all always talked about, and you always have emphasized, is on culture, right? Uh, like how important is it to have a data culture in the organization? So, so how, how do you go, go about getting there? It's, it's, it's one of those things which you also sounds very fluffy to be to me, if I, right for a, for a numbers driven person. How do you actually go and drive uh, cul data culture in an organization? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Uh, and it has been a great learning personally for me, having been in this role for about 18 months, 12 months, we have been talking about the uh, how, how do you make a company change and, and embrace data and analytics? And the learning for me, as, as most people say, culture can eat strategy for, for, for business is like a cliche, but in data, it has become really real. And, and what I mean by that is focusing on both the leadership data culture at one end, as well as data literacy of the practitioners is, is equally important. And what I mean by that is, leaders, the VPs and the GMs and the CEOs of the company have to have a culture of allowing experimentation and, and stop using reports and increase the usage of algorithms. But at the same time, the practitioners, the consumers of this, the supply chain leaders, the sales leaders, the pricing leaders also have to be literate about how do you trust data, how do you use data, and how do you do prediction and prescription using algorithms versus explaining using reports and, and, and stuff. And then the last thing I've learned about data culture, uh, Amrish, is rather than hoarding and storing your data yourself, you have to make it a team sport. You have to basically create data sets and allow others to embrace that data and, and nurture it with uh, so that other people can get usage out of it. And one of the topics, since, since you brought it up now, though, these are these are great points. Is do you would you on all all of these activities? Would you think about kind of people who are doers or like the producers of analysis versus people who are consumers of analysis, and there are people who are translators of analysis? I've kind of seen that framing a fair bit. Would would you approach all of them in the same way, or how would what things would you do differently? Yeah, no, that's a great point. I think a lot of uh, data and analytics in the past used to be people that used to control the keys to the kingdom, as they say, where the power is uh, users and, and where the powerhouses. Uh, data is getting democratized and, and can be accessed on your iPhone or on, on streams of information so easily that it is shifting towards the evangelist. As you mentioned, the person in the middle is becoming more important. Also, what we have found is Companies like ours spend an inordinate amount of time just wrangling and working with those data rather than spending more time in asking open-ended question, evangelizing data and, and creating insights. Uh, and yes, the last uh, kind of group of people that you mentioned, which is the consumers of data are more hungry because the world is getting more uncertain. Like who would have thought COVID-19 yes. pandemic changes uh, requiring PPE, uh, kind of products while changes in elective surgery. It has been a great uh, kind of uh, challenge in terms of serving our customers. And so the sales and, and customer service and our supply chain people are more hungry about insights than they have ever been. That, that is so true. I mean, that's something we see across, I mean, across a lot of our, a lot of the companies I, I have conversations with, which they, they absolutely say that because in, in a lot of ways, uh, 
data, like data analytics was fighting against inertia right now that inertia kind of is is the, that friction has reduced a little bit but like to your peers uh, stehel who are kind of about to get onto this journey you you are you have been in this journey for some time now uh, and and they want to deal with the this, this data culture aspect of it what would be a good starting point i think finding partners that you can learn from is one thing that i have uh, appreciated uh, genpact has been our partner and and having access to leaders like you uh, and and others from genpact has been really great to kind of learn and understand uh, second we have started our own kind of experimentation that mm. Uh, while waiting for Rome to be cleaned up, start building your next kind of Colosseum or Rome, as I call, it, because uh, that is equally important. And, and third, you, you need to kind of make operational or operating model changes, right? Because uh, to sustain building this kind of a transformation uh, is not finding a, a ELP tool or finding a system integrator or finding a group of people that can just do this. This needs to become your DNA. And hence, I'll go back to this needs to be inside the culture and the culture change of the company. Oh, that's interesting. So, so what you're saying is this op the operating model aspect of it just kind of it's a much more holistic uh, kind of a thing. And and when you when you were into this journey uh, on the operating model, uh, was it a little bit of a? It seemed like some things can be started bottom up, and some, like operating model is a little bit of a top down journey. And you have you you're saying is kind of start both at the same time uh, because yes. you can't wait for the oh, completely everything to be figured out, and at the same time you can't kind of just do like experiment by experiment and somehow it will all emerge. So there has to be a plan that you have to build towards. Yes. If I had known that 18 months ago, it would have been better because we <sighs> struggled with doing it top down and bottom up. And, and I think you summarized it very well. You had to approach it both top down and bottom up uh, change in the culture. Wonderful. So Sadia, no, thank you for, 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 for this. Uh, we'll talk a lot more uh, and as we kind of dive deeper into your learnings. But thank you so much for coming and spending some time and, and sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you, Abhish.